This channel is all about making tutorials in the context of actually making a game. If you want to follow along and make something, or just preview my ideas, you might consider subscribing. What's up guys, I'm Justice, I'm an independent developer, and I've noticed that tutorials in the context of actually making a game seems like a new concept. It's one of the reasons I started this channel. By going over the particle system within the context of making my racing game, it allows you two things. First, you might learn something about the particle system at a basic level, but you might also combine that with this video to see how that fits into your game. This isn't just a basic particle system. It's a particle system that emits when the player's car collides with game objects. If I'm not able to get this done, the player won't feel any interaction with the world, so it's very important for that gameplay feel. Stick around to the end for an extra collider bonus tip. Let's get going. In my project, I've got a prefabs folder where I'm starting to store some of the prefabs I've made. I've got Sparky and Spark Light. They both kind of work together here. Sparky is my, if we go to the scene view, you can see it. This is the spark emitter particle system that I've made. You can see if I play it, it just shoots out a couple of particles and that's about it. And that's what I wanted for now because it works out in the game view. We'll be working entirely in the inspector window for this particle system. What we've done is set the duration to 0.3, turn looping off because I want it to fire and then end. Start delay is zero, so it happens instantly. Start lifetime is 0.6, so the sparks exist in the world for twice as long as it took them to emit. The start speed is 30, that's just what felt right. I'll show you how I got to that little bit where I just played with this while it was while the effect was happening and landed on something I like. 3D start size is unchecked, start size is 0.12 to 0.5, that's a random between two constants. 3D start rotation is unchecked, start rotation and flip rotation are both zero. Start color is this cool orangey yellow color that I just picked. Again, I played with this at runtime to get it right, and then I just landed on it because it just looked, the effect just looked right. Gravity modifier is set to one in simulation space of local, rather than world or custom, because locals just work good for what I wanted. Simulation speed is one, delta time is scaled, scaling mode is local, play on awake is checked because I do want the effect to fire as soon as it's uh, called. Emitter velocity is rigid body, max particles is 1000, auto random speed, uh, auto random seed is checked, stop action is destroy, calling mode is automatic, and ring buffer mode is disabled. I think those are all defaults. Um, and I just kept them the same. Now we're not using every module, so I'm only gonna cover the modules we are using and maybe why we're not covering some of the other ones, but I won't go into too much detail for those right now. The emission is set to rate over time of seven, rate over distance of zero. So that way it's gonna fire off like seven um, seven sparks. We restart the thing, you can see it shoots off a couple here, and that's it because it stops before it gets to seven. This is just what I liked in the game. The shape of the emitter is still a cone. Its angle is 15.6. That probably doesn't have to be so high, but it's just what I liked. Uh, the radius is 0.17. The radius thickness is one. The arc is 360. The mode is random. Uh, the spread is zero. There's no length. Uh, it emits from the base, so that way it emits from the small part here and shoots out toward the big part. Uh, I think I did also rotate this, so if I, I just changed it from, you know, whatever, with its rotation. I don't know if that matters because of how I call it, which I'll go over in just a little bit again too. Uh, the align to direction is checked and everything else is zero, and I think again those are defaults. Now, I don't have the velocity over lifetime checked or the limit velocity over lifetime because the velocity of this one doesn't really matter. They just shoot out and then they get destroyed shortly after. The lifetime by emitter speed doesn't doesn't matter because the because it's such a quick effect. Uh, force over lifetime also isn't checked. We are doing color over lifetime though, because I do want it to fade to this red color to kind of look like the spark is burning out. Now, if you use white right here, it's gonna inherit the start color. So this is just a, a white to red effect. Um, the mode is blend, so it's going to like fade to this red effect. And I think it's also, the alpha is also, yeah, it kind of fades out a little bit before it destroys. And if you have it in white at first, it's gonna inherit from its start color. So it's gonna go from this yellow color to that red color. Um, color by speed, size over lifetime, size by speed. None of those are checked um, because we're just we're not worried about changing this over time. It just it is what it is, and then it shoots out. That's that's all it is. There's no noise, no external force like a wind zone needs to apply to it. We do have collision checked because I want it to skitter over across the hood of the car and the back end of the car, things like that. You've got to change the type from planes to world. The mode is 3D, the dampen and bounce are both 0.5, and I think everything else might be a default. The lifetime loss is zero, the minimum kill speed is zero, the maximum kill speed is 10,000, the radius scale is one, the collision quality is high, it collides with everything. The max collision shapes is 256. We enable dynamic colliders, collider force is zero, and we want to multiply by collision angle that's checked, everything else is zero. 
We don't have any triggers, there is no sub emitter, and the texture sheet animation isn't used. That's for things like if you want a butterfly wing to flap in each particle, you could do that there. We do have a light though. And the light is this other prefab, the spark light right here. This is just a spotlight prefab that you end up dragging into your, uh, your lights module here. That's all you do. Uh, a lot of this is controlled in that light prefab, but we want it to have a ratio of one, random distribution. Uh, we want it to use the particle color instead of the light color. Size effects range is unchecked, so we, the range of the light is not impacted by the size of the particle. The alpha affects intensity, that's okay. Range multiplier and intensity multiplier each of one, and maximum lights is 20. So if there were a bunch of these spawning, we would have uh, only 20 of them be lit. The rest of the light module is controlled in the light prefab. So it's very important that you have either a point light or a spotlight. The range, I just played with at runtime and landed on four. The mode is real time. The intensity is 0.1. And that's important because you don't want to have a, a really big broadcast of light because lights are, lights are quite expensive. The indirect multiplier is also one. Now this is where it gets important. You want the shadow type to be no shadows or it could have an impact on performance almost right away. Render mode is auto, calling mask is everything. And that's how you set your lights in a particle system. The last thing we did was the renderer. So I did change the renderer to uh, stretch billboard from billboard. And that way I could give it this kind of pill shape that you're seeing as they kind of launch out from the, the emitter. The camera scale is zero, the speed scale is 0.02, and the length is one. And that's the only changes I made there. Everything else is a default. So there's, there's no masking, there's no active, uh, a apply active color space is checked. And now we'll take a look at what this actually looks like in the game. We go to game view, make it full screen, we hit play. We'll actually see what this looks like. If I drive into my fake wall over here, you can see that the particle system fires up and it goes from that orange color to that red color. It actually emits where I'm colliding with it. If I back up, if I back into the wall, you can see it kind of emits off the back end there. It's pretty cool. Um, if I'm going fast, the sparks like fly out toward the camera. If I drive into the wall, you can see them like it lights up and then you can see like the sparks will actually stay in the world where we set that collider collision space to world, they don't follow the emitter, they stay in the world wherever it, the, the impact happened. And that's the effect, uh, I like it, so pretty cool. Now how did I call this effect at that collision location? It's in the car game object, I'll show you this in the flow graph, we'll open this up in full screen. It's an on collision stay event. I did it that way because I didn't want sparks to come out only when you bumped into something, that, that could work but I really wanted to drive home the effect of like metal grinding on metal. So the first thing we do is we want to compare tags to road. And as long as it's not a road, we're going to go ahead and spawn a collider using the object instantiate node. Uh, we're going to grab the game object of Sparky, and then we're going to take the contacts from the on collision stay. And you want to get list item at index zero. That's the contact point. And then from that node, you want to get the contact point get node. That gives you the vector three of the contact point and plug that into the object instantiator and a from to rotation in the quaternion. And this is going to set the, like the target point of the emitter. So not where it spawns from, but where it's pointing in the forward vector of the parent game body. So that, that way it like shoots out from it, not into, like doesn't shoot into the car if you bump a wall. And that's how we do the particle emitter. Now the bonus tip I have for everybody is the sound effects. Now you probably heard it when we were playing. The collision noise is an on collision enter trigger it goes from that event to a compare tag. Again, we don't care if we collide with the road, that's not gonna make noise. So off that false branch, we wanna set the audio source's pitch to a random value between 0.95 and 1.8. This makes it sound like a different bump every time we, we crash. And then it plays the car crash one sound effect with a slightly different pitch as this modifier triggers. And that's all handled in the car game object under the sounds parent that I have all these sound effects playing in. And this pitch only affects the first one. So it only affects this audio source here. So let's take a look. I'll play the game in the smaller window. And this may not play as smoothly, but that's okay. Every time I bump, if you're watching the pitch, you can see it change from one to 1 1.6, 1 1.5. 7, so it really gives it a nice way of using the same sound effect with a different sound so that it doesn't so that the player doesn't know it, it sounds much more natural this way. I would use this for footsteps, uh, waves on the ocean, I would use this for leaves rustling, anything that you want to use a similar sound effect for but not have it be the exact same sound. And that's the video, that's my time today. Awesome.
Thank you so much for watching, and if you take a look at this video here, you will see how I used a similar collider as a trigger to pick up an item. In this case, it was money. See you next time.